All right, what is going on everyone and welcome back to more Black Desert. My name is John and today I wanted to talk about uh, Grind Spot AP Monster Zone Caps. Now, originally I made a video of this months ago, but over time they actually tweaked some of the Grind Spots to make it easier and or change the AP DP values and everything. So I thought it would be a good time to talk about this again and show you what this is actually all about. And so originally, I think for the most part, uh, when people look at this, they're like, okay, so we look at the uh, official game and see that, look, like this spot says optimal AP is 80. So if your AP is over 80, and then you should be there. But some places have um, more soft and hard caps, where it's like, what should you be at to be efficient at grinding? And then we talked about um different monster zone infos so i think this is a general good source of should you grind here does your ap and dp match up with uh the spots in game that the uh game decides what is good and generally i think those are pretty accurate but what we have here is the ap and dp spreadsheet now you guys can just google this it's on garmoth as well or you can uh, google the official source spreadsheet and what we're going to do is talk about it in a way that um, what does it, all this mean and how to read it. So first of all, let me explain what all of that means. So if you take your stats, I know I'm just wearing life skill gear right now, but if you what we're going to be talking about is in a grind spot, if you see it's like 800 AP or something, what you would do is take your AP, whether you're awakening or a succession, and you take this number, and then you take the extra AP against monsters, and then you all of this will be calculated with buffs and everything. So let's say you're wearing like all your gear and your full buff of elixirs and food and everything. That's what your total number will be, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So yeah, hopefully this is going to be an informative video, and hopefully you guys can improve your grind and maybe try out different spots that you might not have uh, looked at before. So let's get right into it. And I've made a video in the past, but so I think a lot of these might be the same, but I know that some spots got changed. So that's why we're doing this update video. So I'll teach you how to read this. And a lot of this is on the spreadsheet and it teaches you how to read all that as well. So let's talk about all of these and what does it actually mean so first of all let's move this so if you look at this it says the recommended ap now this is the recommended ap that you would see in the game so if you see like these values all of these are just the ones recommended by the game now if you are in the ap range that we talked about before like if your total your ap from your sheet Plus all the buffs equal to whatever is in this bracket you're doing the efficient amount of damage and then you see all these soft caps that go over right so that means if your total ap and monster damage is above the number over here you are only doing five percent more so like let's say for example you are at elvia or camp right and if you're doing over uh, or if you have over 856 monster AP effectively, then you're only doing 5% more. So even if you had 1,000, it's not like a huge difference overboard. So that's how you read it. And this is obviously the test state. And a lot of these I think are still relevant, actually, because I do actually look at all these spots as well. So keep that in mind. If you are over clearing a spot and you're wondering, hmm, why is that? This is like the more advanced thing. The fact that someone has to make a spreadsheet and Prolibus doesn't actually give you this kind of data is, you know, wild itself. And trust me, I know it is what it is. So let's let's talk about this. And I want to talk about all of these spots. Well, I think all the relevant spots that you guys are at. So from my experience, like a lot of you guys have asked me a lot of questions on where should I grind at XAP? and xdp or whatever and usually i give you general recommendations which i think are really accurate but 
I just want to talk about some of the things that I think are uh, relevant so you guys can see should you like are you over clearing are you doing fine and just all that so yeah so I think over in the uh, Serendia Elvia zone um, actually let's talk about this because that's at the top so if you're at Sakraya underwater there is a larger soft cap for being above the gear recommended even though the 100 percent this is like in the green over here these numbers are what you should be looking for just to be able to clear efficiently and then anything above is just a bonus so very easy to get this one so sakrai is definitely a good place to grind and hopefully you can get that within the 260 recommended area so from my experience especially when i was lower geared um, most people recommended you to be at the 261 AP, which is putting you up in a new bracket. And I think 261 minimum sheet AP. And when I say sheet AP, it's like when you hit your uh, gear button and you see that number AP DP without all the bonuses. That's what it means. So I think Underwater Sakraya is more of like, it's not difficult, but you do want to have a little bit of extra DP because... Uh, there's a lot of monsters in the area and it's pretty dense. So like if you pull a big group and then you get there's that giant like crab thingy that throws a rock at you. If you get CC'd by that and you're swarmed by like 12 other enemies, uh, it's not great. So that place is just more for a DP and it has very high soft cap. So basically when you see these 70% soft cap numbers, uh, the higher the better. And so that's good. Um, the only really notable ones in elvia serendia are probably bloody monastery and or camp everything else you just do for the cups that you get for your accessories um if you're looking for a profit i do believe that bloody monastery and or camp are definitely the notable ones so just know that it's actually wild when you look at this because bloody monastery is like they're both 280 spots and on in game but the fact that you have to have a higher uh or i guess a lower the lowest point you should be grinding there effectively is 695 whereas or camp is 632 honestly i think or camp for elvia is actually more profitable than bloody monastery because bloody monastery is a little bit of rng plus you spend more than like an hour grinding there and bloody monastery also depends on how many of those bells you get an hour. And so sometimes you get like five of them. Sometimes you get 10. I don't know. And um, so, yeah, it's a lower floor, but then they all have the same ceiling and then 5% soft cap. So lower is the more stats you have. It kind of just like drops off. So that's when you know when it's good to, you know, start. If you like running or camp, for example, and you have like, I don't know, 900 effective monster damage and you just like grinding there, start working on your DP for that. And then you'll be good. Um, Looking into the Calpheon area, let's talk about Star's End because that one is also a notable one. I actually heard that they're going to be either removing or reworking the pillars for Star's End because people like... <laughs> I'll just say it, it's like I think people bought there even though some don't but it's like the GMs are like nervous or like worried about that so they're just kind of like removing it so it's like okay well whatever rip but overall Star's End definitely not a high end uh, spot it's more like you go there because you want distos and if you get one you're doing good if you don't get a disto an hour you're, it feels really bad the silver is not great um but yeah, you get a high soft cap at Star's End. I think a lot of the Elvia ones are pretty good. It's just, I think most people grind at Hex because it is the most silver an hour. Plus you get a, like the crystallized spares are very good. And if you're using the golden Agris coin, you get a lot of silver an hour there from trash loot. So I think that's definitely notable. But yeah, all the Elvia spots only have a 5% soft cap, which is... Not so great. Quint Hill is... Quint Hill is actually very slow because it's one of those places where 
you don't grind big circles. You just kill like one enemy here, go to another one, kill another enemy. Each each one takes like 30 seconds. So it's like fewer enemies, but they're very tanky in a way. So I personally don't like that as much. Like I always thought of Black as, as a fast paced game. And uh, I'd rather just be at Hex if that was me. But Quint Hill is pretty solid. All right, let's go to the Madaya. Um, the only notable grind spot in Madaya in 2023 is probably uh, Kratuga's Ancient Ruins. And that, that one actually just got a Marnie Realm, which is one of the updates recently. And I think that's good because it, Kratuga is just an overall good spot for just people who are newer all the way to endgame because you can get artifacts and stuff. So if you're just in the... Like, I guess you're transitioning into a mid-tier player when your gear is, I don't know, within the 260 to 280. It's probably a good spot to grind, get all your artifacts ready to go for PvP, PvE, and all that stuff. And so, it's good to know that this has a very high soft cap, and uh, you get more out of your stats than here. And it's very easy. 250 as a sheet, as entry level, and I think it's very good. With 250 plus your gear, or... 250 plus buffs, you can easily clear 470 and you'll be good. So Valencia is a little bit of a tricky one to talk about because they're good, but they're just kind of out of the way. So uh, most of these within the 140 to like 190 area is kind of like just leveling up on seasons and you won't have any problems. So let's talk about centaurs. Centaurs is one that got changed recently where they have a Marnie realm and it's not the big like oval loop, but it's the one under it. And honestly, like I've grinded that rotation as well and it's not even that bad. So for all of the people who are just complaining, it's not the same one. It's basically the same thing. You like, it's fine. So Centaurs just makes a lot of silver. A lot of these have a high soft cap, which I think is very good. And, um... Everything else, if you're grinding like Sulphur, Pilaku, Aquaman, and Histria, you're going for the rare like uh, Compass or Archaeologist map. So like, it doesn't matter what gear you're at as long as you meet the Sheet AP, like the game recommendation, and you'll probably be fine here. I don't think anyone should worry about anything here in general. So it's good to know if all that. Comma Sylvia, um. Polly's Forest is definitely a season spot because it's just a lot of EXP and skill XP, so generally a good place to be. Very low entry, and uh, yeah, a lot of these are seasons. If you're doing Navern Step, Forest or Naros, Monchum, you're probably there for the infinite potion pieces. Now you see it. Honestly, with these kind of stats and like uh, mid tier spots for grinding, these are pretty solid for silver as well. And I wouldn't really worry too much about like, are you under geared and over geared? Cause you can do it in seasons pretty effectively with let's say full pen Tuvala and everything. Um, upper Gyphon, the hardest part about upper Gyphon is finding four other people that want to grind with you for more than one hour at a time. And then you guys ever have those issues where it's like, okay, so you want to grind for like five hours, right? And then every time you grind for one hour, suddenly someone has to go. And then it takes like 30 minutes to find another person. And then suddenly that five hour grind you want to do, for example, just gets cut into like two hours total. So it's like, that's really the hardest spot or the hardest thing is group spots, finding other people who are committed to grinding as well. Um, Ash Forest, actually, it's not that bad. The thing you want to do if you're grinding at Ash Forest, now that it has Marnie Realm, is get some resistance crystals uh, to, like, resist knockdown, and then you'll be fine. Like, chances are if you're grinding Ash Forest, you're not there for the money, you're not there for the XP, you're there for the Debereka necklace in general. And they also added the Dekia Ash Forest, and, uh... Ah, uh, jeez. This has a 70% soft cap, which is good. So, like, the more AP, the better. But getting over a 1,000 is actually very tough, even for endgame players. So, like, I think for most people, you're, you're not getting a <laughs> 1,000. Like, 
you have to be very geared to be doing Dekia in general. So it's still pretty difficult. But good to know this is actually updated and it was updated as of like a week and a half ago. Really good. Um, next we have Gyphon. Oh yeah, there's two different Gyphons, like all the different colors and then just regulars. So Gyphon is one of those places where it's it's calm when you know what you're doing, but things can get out of hand real quickly when you have a big AoE. So 800 at a 70% soft cap. I think that's pretty reasonable. And chances are when you're doing underground, you're probably over like the 290 AP sheet range. And you have to be pretty full buffed as well there. So elixirs or not, it's a pretty rough spot. And it's more of those things where you just learn how to dodge mechanics and then kill the colors like purple, red, and uh, blue. And then you'll be fine. Uh, the other spots that we have, so Dregan. All of these spots, Call Canyon, I don't think I've ever done. I'm going to be honest. But um, if we look at the Shuriken, Day, Night, Blood Wolves, and Tashira, those are all infinite potion spots. Uh, you could do them on Season. If you're at full pen Tuvala, you'll be fine. It does, Like, half of these stats don't even matter. Just, are you above 210? Cool. You can grind there just fine. And then... Odalita, we actually got Dekia um, as of the recent patch. And I heard that one is actually very doable for most classes. Um, the reason why you're there, though, is mostly for... Uh, actually, it's pretty good silver from what I've seen other people do. Granted, what I've seen is uh, really high-end people do it. And or... Well, well, actually, obviously, they're very geared. But it's mostly just wooses and... <laughs> Wooses and Shy is doing really good. Every other class, I'm not too sure, but it is what it is. Um, that's so that yeah, that's one of the things I wanted to do in the near future. Just test out the Thornwood Dekia and see what I could do. Uh, regular Thornwood, very easy. Uh, 250 entry zone. I actually think this is a little bit uh, not so accurate because it recommends 250. I would probably start at like 260, 265, to be honest. Like some of the things actually kind of hurt and things are like the bear is tanky. And if you get swarmed, um, you're not going to be doing as much. So I think like 265, 261 is probably the entry that I would recommend for Delita. Um, Tonkata is Churros, as we all know. I haven't done the Dekia version yet. And I don't, is it a, Duo spot? I think it might be a duo. Same way that regular is duo. So I haven't tested that one out yet. Um, yeah, it's 270. I would recommend both players to be 270 and up, and then you'll be fine. Olin's has a 300 recommended and a 70% soft cap of 530. I honestly disagree with the Olin's one because it's a party of three grind unless they meant like I don't know how they calculate the Olin's one because it's obviously a group of three grinding and I guess do they if they mean like 530 and up AP for times three I guess that's what it means but I don't know. I think it sh they should have just added a total in all of that, but I don't know. This one, just the Olin's Valley one is a little tricky to talk about just because everyone's at a different gear level. Unless you know everyone is above like the 300 spot, then you'll be fine. I have actually tested Dekia Olin's. I am definitely not ready for that. So I think if you do it, you have to be in a party with a Shy, maybe with a Wusa. Or maybe two shies and you. And so it's very difficult right now. Uh, Crypt of Resting Thoughts has a low... Low recommended and all this. And in my opinion, Crypt of Resting Thoughts is a high accuracy place. I did a test of it. And I had more DP stuff than accuracy, admittedly. But um, yeah, it's a very high accuracy spot. Um, things die very slowly. And sometimes I see... People grinding there in a group of two, like you, one DPS, one shy. 
encrypt the resting thoughts and you set the party loot to whoever is going for it. And uh, yeah, I think this number should be a little bit higher for encrypt the resting thoughts, but it is arguably one of the hardest non-deck ES bots in the game right now. It's actually going to be a 320 zone coming out in the near future. I don't know when that is, but uh, I if I can't even do deck yeah, efficiently now, I don't know. 320 might be tough. So Mountain of Eternal Winter. We're going into this spot now. Um, the only real ones you should be worrying about are Jade Starlight Forest, because that one is the one where you get the flame for your Labresca helmet. And so I think that one is pretty solid. And Murrowax Labyrinth. That one is more of a, like a DP or how fast can you clear, but more of a DP check. So I think these are both pretty accurate. Um, you probably want more DP for Jade Starlight Forest because the big dude, uh, you know how so there's like at Jade Starlight Forest is a small, medium and large enemy. Uh, if you don't block the large hit, it actually does chunk you. So you kind of want to have... Um, more DP in that area, and the 280 is just flying itself. So they have notes for the new grind spots, and we don't have any information about that yet. Um, I don't know if it's on Korea, but at least here on NA and EU, we don't have it yet, but uh, I'll test that when it comes out. And so, yeah, hopefully you guys learned a little bit, and if you want to Google the sheet yourself, just search up like Monster Zone AP caps and Black Desert and then you can find it yourself. So hopefully this helped you and you could just if you wanted to read through all these numbers and see uh, once again, how do you find it? You just look at your gear and hit the all stats button and basically that's it. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. I hope the I hope you guys enjoyed it and just wanted to let you guys know we have five days left or until August 16. If you want to use my code John Law and purchase any pearls, A coins and stuff. I uh, use my code and I get a small portion of it. So I definitely appreciate it. Uh, so this is the last week of it and then we'll take the code away. So yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow with more cool stuff. Peace.